This program is made possible by the cities of Palm Desert, Palm Springs, Rancho Mirage, Cathedral City, Indian Wells, and CVAG. Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letter came to us from Aaliyah and she wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, how do we make the world a better place? Aaliyah, thank you so much for sending us this letter. We get letters like this all the time. People want to know how to be more energy efficient, how to be more green, more environmentally friendly. Well, because of you, we're going to look at some homes and some ways that you could be more green in your home. And then we're gonna go really extreme on you. We're gonna get a look at one of the most extreme greenhouses in the country. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. So we've taken over somebody's house. They let the doors open, and Gene from Southern California and Edison and I, you betcha, are gonna take over. Let's take a look. <laughs> I'm guessing because you have these out, we've got the regular light bulbs. In exactly there, right? right. What what you see here in this fixture mm -hmm. is a technology that is hundreds of years old mm -hmm. and terribly inefficient. This is an old school incandescent light bulb. Only about 10% of the energy that's being used is producing light. The other 90% is just producing heat. Why don't you replace this old fashioned bulb with a modern bulb? And that's one of these compact fluorescent bulbs. And one of the things that's very, very important for people to know, Joel, mm -hmm. is that these kinds of bulbs, just like old bulbs, come in different color temperatures or different kinds of brightness. As these compact fluorescent bulbs only use about a third to a quarter of the energy of this bulb. So wow. if you go through and change out all the lights in this house, you're gonna be reducing your energy bill by two thirds to three quarters. I've heard uh -huh. in doing these shows that these aren't great for the environment in terms of, of disposing of. Okay. Every city, every county, and every place that anyone watches Curiosity Quest, yeah. they have household waste disposal sites where you take old paint, where you take old batteries and stuff. Just make sure that you throw away your compact fluorescent bulbs the same way. Obviously, if you're unsure of where to dispose of them, just contact your city or local uh, public utility. Absolutely. Right? Or yeah. just look on the web for compact fluorescent bulb disposal or a household hazardous waste disposal. You'll find something that's probably within a few miles of your house. What is Energy Star Appliance? A, an appliance that has a big star that says Energy Star on it. And it uses less power. Uh, an Energy Star appliance is one that uses less electricity than one that's not certified Energy Star efficient. It's been rated by Energy Star and it's energy efficient. Um, it has a lot of energy. A good way to use energy because it's a star. The important things are, I guess, three things, right? Mm -hmm. Number one is how is the house built or what are you living in? Mm -hmm. And this is, as you can tell, a pretty well built house. Number two is, what do you put in your house? What kinds of appliances? What kinds of electronics? We recommend just think of one thing. Look for the US EPA DOE Energy Star label. Because if you buy Energy Star appliances, what you know is you're buying about the top 20% in energy savings performance. Sure. So that's two things, right? Yeah. The house, how it's built. The two, what in we it. put in it. Number mm -hmm. three is, what do we do? What do we, how do we live in our house? I'm going to point out something. You ready to get a little dirty? Uh, I'm, I'm ready. Let's I'm go ready. down here. Uh oh, <laughs> This is the vent or the breathing part of the refrigerator. Uh huh. And if you look in here, and I won't ask you to do this, <laughs> but you can see there's a lot of dust and stuff building yeah. up. So like uh, right on the top. Yeah. yeah. So this refrigerator is having trouble breathing. So that means the motor, the compressor, is going to have to work a little harder to get rid of the, all the hot air and keep the cool air on the inside. You know, look to make sure that you keep this clean. An easy way to do that 
is just get your mom's vacuum or your dad's vacuum, and it usually has a crevice tool. Yeah. And you can just hold it up there, and it'll suck all those dust bunnies right out. Yeah. Now, do you have a dollar? Um, I oh, let's see. Um, I do you have sure a do. All Here's right. a trick that every one of your viewers can do: to take a dollar bill, stick it in the door of the refrigerator. If it stays in there pretty tight, like this one, uh -huh. you've got a good seal. Nothing's going to slip out. But if it pops out really easy, then that means the seal isn't that tight. That means cold air is going to sneak out. Yeah. And that means your money that you just paid to cool off the inside of the refrigerator is leaking out. Wow. Here's your fun fact. Today's Energy Star refrigerators use half as much energy as ones made before 1993. Two things that you really want to think about when you're working with your dishwasher is number one, always do a full load. Because if you don't do a full load and you leave all kinds of space in there, Ooh, you're like basically these people did. Exactly. <laughs> you're paying for to run the motors, to waste water, etc. That isn't doing any work. It's just going away. The second thing is most dishwashers have a cool dry option. As you can see, in fact, down at the bottom, that's a heating element to create heat instead of power and something like that. Yeah. So why don't you just let these drip dry? That way you use less energy. They'll still come out dry. Mm -hmm. You don't need them right away. So that's a good tip for the dishwasher. Oh, as I look around, here's another opportunity. Come on down. Let's get on down again. <laughs> oh, man. All right. If your home has a fireplace, mm -hmm. the magic thing in a fireplace is just to remember, it's a box for fire and then a pipe to draw that heat and smoke out of the house, right? Right. There's a thing called a flue. Right. And that flue has a little door on it. Can you hear that open and yeah. close? Yeah. In the summer, if that's left open, what do you think's happening? Well, we're having uh, heat, or uh, actually cool air escape. Exactly right. You're yeah. paying to basically leave a pipe that big open in the house, sneaking out the air. So if you're not using your fireplace, uh -huh. the flue should be closed. closed. What you want the kids to do is to tell their parents, mom, dad, <laughs> is the flue closed? If sure. the fire's not on, the flue should be closed. Sure, and open if it's up. on, make sure that thing's open. Exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's wander around. There's more good stuff to see. Wow, I'm a, I'm a, uh, uh, are you in my way? You're in my way, get out of my way. <laughs> All right. Here's your fun fact. Laptop computers use 90% less energy than desktop computers. We're right in a home office just like most houses have. I like it. It's really, really nice looking, but you know what? Hmm. It's cheating us. As we sit here, this is robbing us. What? You want to see why? And you can tell. Just like, just like if a burglar breaks in your house, the alarm lights go off. Uh -huh. I see alarm lights right here. Uh-oh. Look at this printer. What's that button tell you? Uh, that it's on. That's on. Look at the monitor. What's that tell you? On. It's uh -oh. on standby. Okay. Nobody's in the house but us because we snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no reason for these to be on right now. Mm. In fact, it'll only take this about 15, 20 seconds to boot up. The monitor even less time. So why are they paying every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month of every year for energy that isn't being used by anybody? Hmm. That's just a crime. There's actually an easy way to fix that, though. Okay. And it's this baby right here. It's, this is just a little plug-in strip that has a switch on it. Mm -hmm. So while your computer will need to be basically on standby because it has an internal clock, mm -hmm. the things that just plug in to this can be turned off when you leave the workstation with just a little flick sure. of the button. That seems easy. And, I, and I've tried this in my house. Uh huh. But unfortunately, it ends up on the floor. Then I'm like, well, I got to get down the floor. I got to turn it off. And it's such a pain. And, and, and you pick the, the most intelligent thing that you can do is to figure out when and how are you going to use it. So if you put it down on the ground, probably never, ever going to go down there. <laughs> but look right here. You could have run this right here. The plugs are in the back where you don't see it. The switch is right here where you can see it. And turn on, on off switch off. to save you money. That's probably 4% of their energy bill. What is a wall wart? Different mosses or something that stick on walls. <laughs> it sounds like there's a bump on the wall. Like a bump on the wall. A wart that grows on a wall? A wall wart that's a hole in the wall? 
I have no idea. I think it's uh, you plug it into the wall and uh, controls the flow of uh, controls. I have no idea. A wall that has a lot of warts? Have you ever seen a wall with warts? Maybe. Look at what's down here. Do you see these things? Do you know what they are? Well, they look like uh, cell phone plugs. I bet you they're cell phone plugs. They're warts. They're wall warts. <laughs> Because what these ugly, unsightly little things are doing right now uh -huh. is they're taking energy that's supposedly going to be used to charge a cell phone that isn't plugged in right now. Okay. Now, just because there's nothing plugged in here doesn't mean that this isn't working. In fact, put your hand on that. What do you feel? Feel a little warm? Oh, yeah. That's wasted energy yet again. Wow. So, again, that's another opportunity to use one of these little uh, energy strips. If you were to plug those wall warts into this, Turn them on while you're charging your phone or your iPod or your electric toothbrush or your whatever. Uh -huh. Turn it off when you're not using it. Okay. Because right now, even though there's nothing at this end of the plug, that thing is running up their electric bill for no good reason at all. So we know about the warts. We know about them being Rob line here in the office. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I want to go to the bathroom. Uh, um, I'll let you go by yourself if that's okay. Well, why don't we bring everybody in? Because I think there's probably going to be some fun stuff to see there. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Am I following you? Am I... <laughs> That was quite a segment. Uh, <laughs> you guys are coming too. You're not standing there when you get in here. Get in here. Here's your fun fact. 80% of all residential energy use is consumed in single-family homes, while only 20% is consumed in apartments and mobile homes combined. This is kind of uncomfortable for me. <laughs> well, let me, let, me, let me put your mind at ease. When you come to a bathroom, what's the first thing you think about? Uh, the toilet? No, ways to save energy. <laughs> And what I see is an abundance of ways to save energy here, too. That's exactly what I was thinking. What can we do? Well, first things first. This has one, two, oh, three, wow. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bulbs. Wow. Ten bulbs of the old fashioned incandescent I bet you that type. Happened. Be careful that you touch oh, that. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Can I you imagine how much energy is being used? in this bathroom every time the lights are on. So another lighting option, as we were just talking about, is this is a compact fluorescent bulb that's made to look just like that bulb. So let's save a little electricity, put smart lighting in the, in the bathroom as well. Okay. But let's not just think about electricity. Let's think about water, too. What do you think this thing is? In the shower head. Yeah. Perfect. Let's take a look in here. All right, so now, look, oh my goodness, he's in the shower. <laughs> what are you doing in here? <laughs> well, while you're in here, why don't you learn a little something? <laughs> What we see here, as you pointed out, Joel, is a low flow shower head. Mm -hmm. That means it lets less water come out than this kind of shower head, which is just basically one that lets a ton of water pour out. Sure. That's going to save money in a lot of different ways and save energy because it takes motors, big pump motors, to push water through the pipes. It takes energy either in a gas water heater or an electric water heater to heat up the water in the shower. Sure. After the shower is over, it takes motors to treat the wastewater. So you're going to save a lot of energy and use less water. So that's better for the environment and, again, another way to save energy without making any sacrifices at all. Plus, this looks pretty cool. Well, no, it does look cool. It does look, now, I was, I was surprised. You put a shower head. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> well, electricity? What? Well, because if you think about it, everything's connected when you're talking about energy. Mm -hmm. How we live, how we use water, how we use energy, how we drive. So what we want to do is to get everyone to start to think about all those little choices we make through the day that will, in the end, help protect our environment and use less energy at the same sure. time. Okay. Okay? Well, let's get out of the bathroom. Yeah, it's going to be creepy. Can we go? Uh, yes, now you say that. And you guys can actually stay. <laughs> so, Joel, here's another little place where we can save just a little bit of energy. You'll notice around this house they've got night lights, so that in the night it's a little safer to walk around and stuff. Sure. That's fine. But it's using, again, an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb. So what you can do is, when you go to replace this, even though it's small, think of it as a bunch of little tiny, I guess, hoodlums stealing your energy, <laughs> stealing your warts. money. Exactly. Pimples. Small wart. Pimples. Pimples. There you go. <laughs> so even for things like night lights, you can find, and this is an LED night light or a light-emitting diode night light. So it's even more efficient than a compact fluorescent and certainly more efficient than this. So just always look for opportunities for where you can use 
a smarter piece of equipment mm -hmm. to save a little more energy. Now, these, this isn't using a whole lot of electricity, right? No, it's not, but think of it like this. This house probably has five or 10 or 15 of these sure. just scattered around. This street, there's probably 100 of them on the street. This city, there's thousands and thousands <laughs> across the country. This adds up. Sure. So just being a little smarter every single day mm -hmm. adds up to power plants worth of energy. Wow. And that's the way we want to work. And again, what are we finding? More places where we can save a little energy and save a little money. So remember when we looked at the dishwasher and what was the rule for using the dishwasher? Um, that was the, the heat in the bottom. And I didn't know I was going to be quizzed on this, Gene. And um, full loads. Full loads. Exactly. Yes, yes. Same thing with the washer, okay. same thing with the dryer. In fact, with the dryer, Instead of just sorting everything by, you know, colors, whites, darks, and stuff like that, sort it by those things that are like really heavy, like towels and things like that, blankets. Mm -hmm. Do those together because they take more time to dry, and they do all the light stuff together, like t-shirts, things of that nature. They'll dry much faster. But you know what makes that dryer work even better? The uh, ability to breathe. Uh, Remember the refrigerator? Uh, refrigerator? Yeah. Oh yeah. The okay. Lift. Let's do an experiment together. Okay. Breathe. Take a couple, three big breaths. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now do this. <laughs> Not so easy? <laughs> um, I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. Well, let's take a look right here. This uh -huh. is the lint screen of this dryer. Look what we found here. <laughs> a blanket that this has to breathe through in order to dry the clothes. Okay. So <laughs> what you want to do is make sure between each load, that you clean the lint screen so the dryer is going to be able to breathe easier. Sure. And the other thing is, you know what this lint is? Um, a jacket. It's basically, <laughs> well, that's, you're right. It's your jacket, it's your t-shirt, it's your underwear. It, this is the lint from beating up your clothes, drying them here. So maybe, just maybe, your kids can talk to their parents about maybe just drying one load a week, a month, on a clothesline. Because your clothes will last longer, You'll use less energy, and it's better for everybody. Well, our quest has taken us to the garage. Yes. The good news is you'll see that they have their air, uh, their hot water heater here with the Energy Guide label. So that's another way that when you go shopping for appliances or water heaters and things like that, always look to see how much it's going to cost to use it, not just to buy it. Okay. But there is one bad, scary thing in here. Okay. And that is, here's a good intention toward it. They have a programmable thermostat, which is a thermostat that you can set to be at different temperatures at different parts of the day, <laughs> sitting here with all the projects that they're going to do sometime in the future. The thing that they really need to do is hook that up now and set their house so that in the daytime, when people are gone, mm -hmm. in the summer, they let it get a little warmer. In the winter, they let it stay a little cooler. Here's your fun fact. For each degree you turn down the thermostat in the winter, you'll save up to 5% on your heating costs. All right, so we've made our way out to Palm Springs, where I'm here with architect and builder Lance O'Donnell. Now, Lance, you have a very unique house. When you look at the house, you look at it holistically. So the site, the site, any rainwater that falls on the site actually is, is maintained on site. So these percolation ponds that you see here, there's several throughout the property. Oh, wow. When the water falls on the roof or it falls in the driveway, it gets channeled to these percolation ponds. And these percolation ponds then seep the water back into the soil naturally. So there's no runoff into the neighboring sites. And it's a, it's a way to regenerate the water in a natural way, just, just as, if, as if the site were here before the house. All right, so this is your electrical meter, and it's going backwards instead of this way. Correct. Oh, it is. Yeah. So it is. during the daylight hours, that continues to spin backwards. That's and crazy. At night, it'll go the other direction. But the balance between day and night is virtually zero. So the, the, the stucco on the house, there's no paint on this. This is integral color. Oh, so really? if I scratch it, it's still the same color inside, and it never has to be painted. Oh, and that's okay. the same for all of the materials around the house. We'll see the concrete block, it's natural, no paint. One of the ideas that, that I have is I don't want to be a slave to maintenance. So low maintenance materials and using them in a natural state. Simple. Green. Simple. So this is the courtyard side of the home. Wow. And it's the courtyard side of the home because it's wind protected. Seasonally, we get very, very strong winds blowing out of the northwest. So what we did is we, we turned our back to the wind so that we can protect it and create these outdoor um, living areas that, that 
are, are usable year-round, even when the wind's blowing. This is beautiful. Lap pool, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. It's 60 feet long. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it has a special filtration and, and chemical system. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so it's a chemical-free pool. It's kind of like a some therapy pools use, um, you know, use this sort of system. It's a UV light that actually kills microbes. So as the water goes through the filter of the pool, oh. um, there's a UV light that kills the microbes in the water. And that's what makes your pool turn green. Sure, so sure. So instead of chlorine, bromine, and those different chemicals, and muriatic acid, we don't use any of those. So it's, it keeps it so it's chemical free. Now I notice that uh, it looks on the trim of the entire house. Is it metal? Yeah, that's the fascia of the home, what we call the fascia. And it's a bonderized metal, and it's, it's another one of those products that we use that requires no maintenance. So it has this natural battleship gray color. Over time, it'll patina into more gray, but yeah. it'll never rust, it'll never require painting, and it just it blends wow. into the sky at certain times of the day. And below that... Yeah, I was just going to ask yeah. about the... Uh, was this bamboo? Or it's bamboo. It? Wow. So typically, this is a, a rapidly renewable product, something mm -hmm. that uh, folks call rapidly renewable because bamboo grows so quickly. The outside of your home is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm ready to go see the inside. What does LEED stand for in the environmental community? It's not like the main person. Like, it's like the leader, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Thinking something to do with light and emitting and energy direction. It means that they're certified. <laughs> certified to be lead? Would you have your papers? Would you have paperwork done? To be legal certified? Uh, that is our <laughs> U.S. Green Building Council Platinum oh! Lead designation, yes. <laughs> This is yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. That is, yeah. There's only two other homes in California that are lead platinum. Did you? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right, Nate, what you ought to do is you ought to, so you can really brag about this, just get a chain connected to it so you can wear it around <laughs> yeah, your neck. A little say, bling. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> only two other homes in Cal Southern California right now. In California. In California. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I think there's one other in the nation, so there's three homes that are lead platinum. Is it just a combination of everything you've already talked about? It's a combination of everything we talked about. It's the simple measures, yeah. and then you know, adding a little technology to it at the end. Now, we're standing on. You're standing on the concrete slab. Like, this, yeah. This is the slab that uh, you know that we built the home on top of, and then we just ground it down and uh, put a sealer over it. What is a gray water system? A water system that's gray. A gray water is not completely filthy like toilet water, but sink water and not clean water. It's in between. A uh, gray water system is uh, using water that came from sinks and uh, washing machines and non-sewer and to use that water for uh, uh, irrigation. The gray water system is, I think it's like the purple water system where you use water efficiency, like where you recycle it. Gray water? Uh, uh, a gray water system. <laughs> Which is? Water. Saving water. <laughs> we also installed, and it's not here in the kitchen sink, but we installed a gray water system. Mm -hmm. So the water from the showers, water from the bathroom lavatories, all, and the washing machine all go to a gray water system. So we've double piped everything. So explain gray water for those that don't understand that. A gray water system is essentially a, a way to take water that's used on site, water that's um, been used once for cleaning or for uh, washing clothes, and then reusing it on site in some fashion. And okay. so we're reusing it to naturally irrigate the plants and materials out in our yard. Well, now, some people are going to be curious, does that include toilet water? No, that's, okay. uh, that would be considered black water, which goes oh. to the, the sanitary sewer system. Sure. I didn't realize it had a different color. <laughs> what? No, no, I mean gray I mean, water, black water. I didn't realize we called that <laughs> black water. I didn't know that. Wow, so we're learning something on the show here. <laughs> Yeah, I've been through your house now. This is the last room. I mean, where's the stuff? <laughs> well, you know, we're minimalists. We, we have a minimum amount of stuff that, that we need. You know, and it's part of the whole sustainable movement is to do more with less. 
And now, this, this low line thing, you, you were mm -hmm. telling me something about it. And mm -hmm. I said, well, wait, 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 tell me on camera. What is this? It's a soffit, and the air conditioning ducts travel through this soffit. What that allows them to do is to be in the cool condition space inside. So we're not pumping hot air up into an attic, or cool air up into an attic, and then warming it, and then back it down into the house. They're staying inside the conditioned area, so it works much more efficiently. And now your shower is really unique, <laughs> really, wow. <laughs> How did you come up with that design? <laughs> well, we wanted a place to go from the pool into the house without tracking water or tracking uh, um, sand or anything else. So we wanted to have the shower in a location that the outdoor <laughs> shower could act as, you know, the place to rinse off before you come in. Yeah, <laughs> so it was just natural. This is great. Seriously, thank you for allowing us to come in here. This is beautiful and, and I, uh, serene. I'm thinking of things mm -hmm. that are sticking out my serene. I just feel so relaxed and simple is green and less is more mm -hmm. and I can go I feel like a commercial now for <laughs> well you know it's been our pleasure if you guys want to come back in a couple years when everything's grown in a little bit more we'd love to have you <laughs> that's great no no I appreciate it thank you guys so much thank I really you. appreciate it here's your fun fact the total number of idle TVs and VCRs in the US produce the same amount of pollution as two million cars I want to thank all the homeowners and all the experts involved in making today's show. And I especially want to thank you, Aaliyah, for setting us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something that you're curious about, why don't you let me know? Go to curiositycquest.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. And remember, this is our planet, and it is our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green and I'll see you next time. Ah, oh, for now, I'm going to sit and be one with nature because it is truly serene to be green. I just made that up right now. It's pretty good. That's my line. Ah. <clears throat> it's good. Alright, I'm done. I'm hungry. This program is made possible by the cities of Palm Desert, Palm Springs, Rancho Mirage, Cathedral City, Indian Wells, and CVAG. If you'd like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositycquest.org. The cost is $19.95.